Construction Lines for Deed Processing in ArcGIS Pro. Many assessors mappers use construction lines to map deeds before changes are made to the parcel layer. Here is a few modifications you might find useful. Labels for instruments. When mapping deeds, it might be helpful to quickly see what instruments created what lines. It's possible to have multiple labels on a feature, in this instance where the deed calls and instrument numbers are shown. This can be done using label classes. Type symbols. Visualizing the type of map change could quickly tell you if a line is a traverse to a point of beginning, combination of parcels, a lot line adjustment, a split, or a subdivision. In ArcGIS Pro, it's possible to assign the symbol type while you're entering the meets and bounds in the traverse tool. Visualize vertices. Often, it's cumbersome to determine where the call starts or finishes. It's possible to create a symbol for every vertex, thus showing you where each call starts and stops. Editor tracking. When working with various deeds, it's sometimes useful to know when something was mapped. Enabling editor tracking is one way to automatically log when a feature was created and when it was last updated. You can also see who created the feature and who was the last to make an edit. Now, let's go into detail on how to make these configurations in ArcGIS Pro, starting with labels for instruments. Please note that we have already created a Kogo enabled line feature class with the type and instrument fields for these examples. If you would like to see how to enable Kogo fields on a line feature class, please watch our video on how to do that. Labels for instruments. When working with any feature class in ArcGIS Pro, it's possible to label each feature with more than one attribute. To get started, you will want to open the labeling properties for your construction line. Here, you will want to click on the Class drop-down at the top of the Label Class window. You will see two classes listed, Direction and Distance, and Direction. Those are currently the labels we see on the construction lines. Let's add another class for instruments by clicking on the menu at the top left and selecting Create Label Class. Name the new label class INST and press OK. Next, we want to configure this class to show the contents of the instrument field in our construction lines. To do that, select INST from the class dropdown to configure it. Now we want to make the label have a prefix of INST and then the instrument number. Select VB script from the language at the top and then type in quote INST dot space quote ampersand and then the instrument number field. Press apply. The instrument number label should now show on the map. Now I'm going to make the instrument label look a little different from the other labels so I can quickly know what I'm looking at. To change the appearance of the label, click the symbol button on the label class window. Here we can expand the callout group and set the drop down at the top to composite. Customize the appearance however you would like and press apply. There should now be instrument number labels shown on the construction lines. Type symbols. Now let's create a drop-down list for the type of each deed so we can easily edit the attributes and quickly symbolize them. To create a drop-down list for a particular field, you will need to create a domain at that geodatabase level. Navigate to the geodatabase that holds your construction lines and right-click on it and select Domains. The Domains window should appear. In the first row at the top left, name the domain Deed Type. Make sure the field type is text and the domain type is Coded Value Domain and the rest is at default. Next, in the right window that says Code, type the first item you want to appear in your list. Enter TRVSPOB. Then, in the description box, type Traverse to POB. Continue to enter the following code and descriptions. Combo, or the description of Combination. LLADJ, or the description of Lot Line Adjustment. Split, with the description of Parcel Split. And Sub, with the description of Subdivision. Press Save once finished. Now that the domain has been created, open the attribute table for your construction lines and go to the fields view. On the field for type, select deed type for the domain. Now that you have the domain set, open the symbology window for construction lines and set it to use the unique values from the field type. You should now have a specific symbol for each entry and the domain you created. Let's try using these new symbols when we create the new traverse. Start a new traverse and set a starting point. Once you set the starting point, you have the option to set the symbol type from the drop-down right before the direction field. Left-click to open the menu and select Traverse to POB. This type will continue until you change it. Enter a distance and direction, and then change the type symbol to the lowest record to parcel split. Enter a direction and distance again. You can see that you can change these before you enter the line depending on the type of deed, and then you can visualize that type on your map. Visualize vertices. When editing, it might be useful to see where vertices of lines are without having to go to the trouble of editing them. 
In ArcGIS Pro, you can place markers on the line and polygon symbols showing the location of a vertex. To do this, go to the Symbology window for construction lines. Open the properties for Traverse to POB. Next, open the Layers menu. You can see that there is a line symbol with a solid stroke. Let's add a marker symbol. Go to the Structure menu and press Add Symbol Layer under the Layers group and select Marker. This will create a point symbol. Now open the Layers menu and select the new marker you just added. Scroll down to the Marker Placement group and expand it. Select On Vertices from the drop-down for placement. Then check the boxes On Control Points and On Extremities. Press Apply. You should now have marker dots on the vertices of every line. Feel free to customize the symbol for the marker if you would like. Editor Tracking. Sometimes, you may want to know when a feature was created, last edited, or maybe who was the last person who created or edited it. Here is how you turn on Editor Tracking. Open Catalog and navigate to your Construction Line Feature class and open its properties. Next, click on Editor Tracking and click the toggle to turn on Editor Tracking. Leave the default settings and press OK. Now, create a new feature and save your edits. Open the Attribute table and go to the new feature you created. You can see the Create, Edit, and Username for both. Going forward, any feature you create will have this information auto-populated. There's a lot of options when it comes to creating your editing environment, and hopefully these few configurations can help.